Hello and welcome back to Newsroom Nigeria. This is where we give you hot, fresh and sizzling news all day long. Obaseki, snob of Oba Iwari II. In a dramatic turn of events, Governor Godwin Obaseki and his protege, PDP gubernatorial candidate Asui Gudalo, made headlines yesterday during their mega rally in Bene City. The rally, which also featured former Vice President Atiku Abubaka and several PDP governors, was marked by a conspicuous and disrespectful omission, a deliberate snob of a reverend traditional ruler, His Royal Highness Omonoba Nedo Uku Opolopolo Obaiwari in favor of a visit to the Esama of Benin Kingdom. This deliberate slight towards the Oba of Benin is not merely a political misstep, but a profound insult to the cultural and traditional heritage of the Benin people. It reflects a troubling pattern of disrespect that the governor, Governor Basiki, has exhibited towards the Benin Traditional Council. Over the years, Obasiki's administration has consistently sought to undermine the authority of His Royal Highness and the traditional institutions that uphold the cultural fiber of Edo State. His efforts to establish sub kingdoms are viewed as a thinly veiled attempt to undermine and weaken the influence of the Oba and the Bene Traditional Council. The snob during yesterday's rally underscores a disturbing trend of Basiki's open and unabashed defiance against the Benin Palace. In traditional Edo society, such gestures are not taken lightly. The Oba of Benin is not merely a ceremonial figure, but a central pillar of authority and tradition whose role extends beyond the political realm into the very art of Benin culture and identity. Ignoring the Oba is tantamount to rejecting the values and customs that binds the community together. The implications of this snob are far-reaching and multifaceted. Politically, it sends a dangerous message about Obasiki's and Igudalo's disregard for the traditional institutions that play a critical role in the governance and unity of Edo State. Such actions could be interpreted as a deliberate strategy to erode the influence of traditional rulers and disrupt the socio-political harmony that has been, in, 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 that has been integrated to the Edo State stability. Traditional rulers and elders who have historically served as mediators and guidance of peace are likely to view this snob as a direct challenge to their authority. This could lead to a broader backlash from traditional institutions and their supporters, potentially destabilizing the political landscape and alienating a significant portion of the electorate who hold these institutions in high regard. Edo State's rich cultural heritage and traditional institutions are vital to its identity and governance. The Oba of Benin, as the custodian of these traditions, embodies the unity and continuity of the Benin Kingdom. This respect towards the Oba is not just a political miscalculation, but an affront to the cultural values that the people hold there. The actions of Obaseki and Igudalo call into question the commitment to respecting and upholding the traditional institutions that are crucial to the state's social coercion. Edo people must reflect on the implications of supporting leaders who show contempt to their traditions and heritage. A leader who disrespects the Oba and the traditional council 
is one who may in turn undermine the very essence of Edo society. The deliberate snob of the Oba of Benin by Governor Baseki and PDP gubernatorial candidate Asui Godalo highlight their profound disrespect for Edo state's traditional institutions. This disregard not only undermines the cultural values central to the community's identity, but also questions the Godalo's suitability as a leader. His actions signal a troubling tendency to undermine the very foundations of Edo society. The electorate should view this behavior as a clear indication that Igodalo's leadership is incompetent, incompatible with the values and with the values and integrity that a do state needs. The state deserves leaders who respect and uphold its rich traditions, ensuring that traditional institutions continue to safeguard unity and stability. Before I draw the curtain for today, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Before we go, let's take a look at some of the reactions we got online. Now, so you know, go greet our Oba, eh? Make the Beniz ready to buzu buzu, babi buza buza, come out for our land. Anybody where you respect our Oba, we no respect our Oba, na enemies. Peter Aduyu says, this writer is an APC campaign by God. When did visiting the Oba become mandatory for a political party campaign? When does visiting an Oba during rally translate to a good governance? It should be noted whether you like it or not. Your traditional rulers are no longer the king they used to be and don't even have any political power whatsoever. The governor can even sack them at will. Hmm. Anyway... The thing is, we cannot remove the influence of these, polit uh, of these uh, traditional leaders from politics. They are very influential. That is why each time when you know there is an election coming, even presidential election, the candidates go to greet the Obas whenever they, they, they get to each of these towns that they go to for campaign. So it is it is normal thing to do. And even if you are not, you okay, even if you say that their role is not important in the electioneering process or there's no way that they, they, they do not influence the political decisions of the electorate that much so you don't see their impact. So don't even go to any palace at all. Instead of, you know, going to the palace of an Oba that is, you know, even under the, on, as in the one that is lesser, that is junior, to the upper of Benin. If you don't want to go to any palace at all, don't go to anyone. Just leave palace out of your visit. But you, him going to the like the next upper after the upper of Benin, instead of visiting the upper of Benin, which is like the highest ranking traditional ruler in Benin, uh, that is a slight and is very it is very offensive and. According to, this is not the first time that Obaseki would do that. So I understand why people are, people are taking it personal. Israel says, must you involve the Oba in your campaigns? Leave the palace out of your bitter politics. For he is the Oba for all in a do state. Oyetunde Akombi says, bury Obaseki politically and his party permanently in a do state. Hmm. Remy says, something is wrong somewhere. This may affect the success of PDP in the coming election. Osadono says, APC should leave Oba of Benin out of politics. He is the father of all. Oba of Benin cannot be so cheap for APC. Lastly, Stanley Igbenedion says, APC propaganda. People are wiser now. And they can't just be deceived by mere rhetoric or useless write-up. You all, let me have your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think? Do you think that the Obers are still a significant factor in the campaigning and electioneering process? Do you think that they actually have 
much influence in the decisions of the electorate in the voting or the voting power of the electorate do you think that they have that much influence in influencing you know where the electorate will go which person they are going to vote for let me know in the comment section what you think like i said subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done that i will see you all in my next video bye for now